Well, uh, I thought it was going to last 10 minutes, but it was probably more like 20. But still, it, it, it came and went. And, uh, and it, it was an example of how people from Maine have much thicker skins than, than, than folks from where I'm from in San Diego. Uh, everyone went through it. The sun came out, and we had a nice trip. It's almost probably by the time we got to the end of the trip, I had almost forgotten how to raid. Except my, what, my socks are still wet. Yeah, my shoes are full of <laughs> Okay, so here's a, probably one of the best paintings of America uh, while uh, racing. Uh, so if you look at our sail plan against the one that's actually, that actually raced on that day, uh, you'll see that they, they have, the only changing configuration are the following. The, the, the foresail, and from back to front, it's mainsail, foresail, staysail, uh, in this picture, flying jib, and on our boat, it's, it's just a rayer jib, but the foresail was loose-footed where we have a boom, so fairly subtle difference. And uh, you'll notice that the staysail, the triangle, the second sail from the front, uh, goes all the way out to the bowsprit. Now, we don't have that configuration. We break that into two sails, a staysail and a jib, because this configuration does not allow for a forestay to go from the top of the mast to the bow of the boat, right? And therefore, all the, all the loading, holding up both masts are, are, are all dependent on the, on the configuration at the bow spread. So it's a very dangerous setup. Um, uh, okay, and then the flying jib out to, out to the front, uh, that sail actually breaks away from the boat a few minutes after this painting and is cut away and is never seen again. Captain Brown, the captain of the boat, who was a New York Harbor pilot, uh, I hated that sail, so when it, when, it, uh, when it broke, he said, just cut it all away, and he was much happier about that. Okay, so, so the boat uh, 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 doesn't come back to the U.S. It's sold to a um, British yachtsman, stays in Europe for 10 years, is renamed Camellia, makes its way back to the United States uh, during the Civil War when the Confederate Navy purchases the boat, renames it Memphis, and uses it as a blockade runner against the uh, Union during the Civil War to, to move sensitive cargo and passengers between Confederate ports. It then is uh, captured by the Union Navy in St. John's River in Jacksonville, but the uh, Confederate Navy made it as hard as possible. They scuttled or sunk the boat in the river, but the Union Navy re brought it back up anyway. Uh, and that actually was the second time the boat had sunk. Uh, okay, so then when the Union Navy have it, they rename it back to the America, but now it's the USS America, the first of what would be six U.S. Navy ships using the, the name America. The current one is a helicopter carrier based in San Diego, a brand new ship. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, functions with them. The stops we've made um, here on the East Coast, there's been a few where they've really taken advantage of the opportunity. And Booth Bay Harbor is definitely one of those stops. And it doesn't happen on its own. It happens through a lot of community involvement. It's always really fascinating for me to see how how yacht clubs uh, connect with their communities. And you can tell that the yacht club here in Booth Bay wants to connect uh, with their community and have a nice, healthy connection and relationship with their community. And that's what ended up with having such a successful day here. It, you get to see how, and, and remember, to me, and I always take the literal meaning of yacht, which means fun boat. And I would say uh, definitely that it means Booth Bay Harbor Fun Boat Club, because the, the people here are very warm, the stops here have been great. I'm looking forward to the dinner tonight, and I'm and well done uh, uh, for for an example of how a yacht club can have a positive impact in, in with their community.